Welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah Blackwell and today is the start of a brand new reading vlog. I've really enjoyed doing reading vlogs lately. Let's just keep the ball rolling with this. So today I'm going to be reading books with flowers on the cover. I don't know if it's going to be just strictly flowers or there might be some like plants in there. We're just going to have to see but we're, we're going for a botanical theme on the covers here. So I already have done some filming and so you'll see me here in this outfit and this look later but I'm going to be starting out this vlog with Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson. So this book is a cottagecore botanical horror, sapphic horror, really short, 200 pages. I got this from the library. I've heard really good things about this. I know Riley Marie read this, really liked it. It was one of her favorite books of the year. I've been kind of seeing this do the rounds on BookTube. And as someone who really likes the cottage court vibe in her books, I do really enjoy horror. I know I don't talk about that much on my channel, but I want that to change. I really want to talk about a lot of the other books that I enjoy reading. I feel like a lot of my content is romance centered because that is like half of what I read. I've really been branching back out into like a lot of other things that I really enjoy reading and I just I want to talk about everything I want to read and especially like this is my channel I'm not worried about super fast growth and trying to be in a specific niche and all that stuff that you're supposed to do when you're trying to grow on YouTube. Um, I'm not really concerned about that. So I'm just going to talk about all the books I like to talk about. I've kind of been in the vlogging mood lately. So this is going to be the first book I'm going to read and hopefully do some springy things. The garden's being put in. The weather's been nice. We are having a spring cold, but that's okay. I'm almost cleared up from it. So that's good. So let's just go ahead and get into this video. I have now started um, Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson. I am 70 pages. Yeah, I'm on page 71. So about a third of the way through this book is only 200 pages. So if I haven't already given a synopsis, this book is about this woman, she's in her late 20s. She's a professor. She's kind of has this strange relationship with her mom. They're not talking. She's recently broken up with her boyfriend. So she's kind of like an outcast. She goes to this farmer's market one day and meets this woman named Ash who works at this farmer's market. And she has this booth where she sells like soaps and candles and cupcakes. And our protagonist, what's her name? Oh my goodness. Rosemary. Rosemary becomes obsessed with her. I think things get unhinged and I am a third of the way through. I'm loving this. This is like a sapphic horror and I'm just, I'm adoring this. I have my theories about where things are going to go. I'm liking the cottage core kind of aspects. Ash lives at this farm. It's, it's beautiful and idyllic and she doesn't use internet or phone, like a cell phone. Um, she doesn't really watch TV. She has a gorgeous garden, a greenhouse. She has chickens that run around. Like it's very idyllic farmstead cottage core. So I'm loving those vibes, but I can also see there's like times when the author puts in like words that don't fit. Um, and I, I think the idea is to put you on edge to get you off kilter. There are times when she just throws a word in to describe something that's just visceral and weird and it takes you out of it and it makes you feel unsafe almost. But yeah, this is gonna be a short update because I am sick. I actually just filmed the intro to last week's vlog. <laughs> I'm not feeling the best, uh, but I am really enjoying this. So I will update you guys soon. I will see you guys for the next update.
I finished Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson. This book, <laughs> I needed a day to like think about this. I have, I have mixed feelings. It's a five star. This is like five star, top tier. I loved it, but at the same time, like I'm insulted. <laughs> And I can't really say why, but if you read this, then you might know if you, you know, if you know anything about me, uh, you know, I'm a little bit insulted <laughs> and, and, and not that there's anything problem. It's not that it's problematic really in that way, but I don't know. I, yeah, I was, <laughs> I really like this book. Okay. So this is super cottage core. I love all the imagery of the gardens and the farm and I loved the sapphic relationship. Most of this book is like sapphic lit and then things get crazy. <laughs> things get unhinged guys. Okay. So yes, this is technically a horror and I would say this book is like ultimate spring vibes, but if you want like an ultimate spring vibes book, that's a horror then this is totally it. Like this is it. The descriptions of the greenhouse and the gardens, the barn and like all this stuff, like it is so spring and the bees, the beehives and the blooming plants and the flowers and just everything. Like this is super, super, super spring. Okay. Like spring quintessential spring but then dark horror at the same time like so it's basically the perfect cover because we've got the flowers but it's this is a dark cover right i just <laughs> this book guys this book go read this book and then message me because i need to talk to someone about this i need to talk to someone about this okay so yeah five stars if you're looking for a flowery cottage core horror with a sapphic romance <laughs> i don't even know romance it's sapphic all right um go read this book okay go read this go read this okay so read this, had a good time. And then yesterday started another book because we actually went to the park just to do some kite flying with the boys. David pulled out a kite and started teaching them how to fly kites. It was not super windy day. We just went to one of the local parks that had like a big um, football soccer field. We just hung out in the middle of it and they flew kites and I started a book. And that book was The Wife Upstairs. That was a really fun day. We did that and then I got home. I didn't get any footage, but we actually started transplanting out tomatoes, even though it's a little bit early, but like, I think it's gonna be just fine. And just had a nice day. We're still kind of under the weather, but that's okay. Okay, so then I started The Wife of Stairs and I am, uh, I read the first seven chapters, but that's really not that far in because um, the chapters in this book are really short, which I love for a domestic thriller. I love short chapters because it just keeps things flowing and fast and fun. Yeah, I read the first seven chapters of The Wife Upstairs. This is supposed to be like a modern day Jane Eyre kind of take. Now, I don't know like how true to Jane Eyre it is, so I guess we'll have to find out. But so far, we basically have our protagonist. She is a dog walker. She also works at a coffee shop, but she's got a hidden past that she's trying to keep hidden. She is a dog walker in this really, really rich neighborhood. These McMansions or actual mansions, like we're talking seven bedroom type houses. And she has kind of gotten like a reputation as a good dog walker. So she's kind of like building up her clientele in the neighborhood. Um, she's also doing some not so great stuff. She seems to be a bit of a klepto and that's not the best. So we clearly have this partially unlikable, unreliable narrator. And then early on she meets this man um, and they kind of seem to be developing a relationship. So they've gone on their first date already. Just the first be beginning of the book, they've gone on their first date and they seem to be hitting it off. I'm sure things are gonna get a little bit off the rails, unhinged, I'm hoping. I have read one other Rachel Harrison book before, Reckless Girls, which is a beach setting book. I think I gave that three stars. It gave what I was asking of it. It gave beach, rich people, 
drama, but it wasn't super thrilling. So I'm kind of hoping this will be a little bit better, but I don't have super high expectations, but I just felt like a domestic thriller. Lately, I've been trying to get some of the books like read that I've had on my shelves for a while. I read The Woman in Cabin 10 recently for the last vlog that I did. And now I'm reading this one. And both of these are thrillers like that I've had on my shelves like the longest. So I'm kind of like happy to get that done. They were also both on my TBR early. I know this one was on my TBR for spring, but I don't have high expectations, but I'm hoping for like a good domestic thriller. And so far it's delivering. I'm enjoying it. I tried to read Jane Eyre and DNF'd it because that book uh, lasts forever. I've also tried to read Rebecca, which is a Jane Eyre take, I believe. Uh, DNF'd that. So maybe this Jane Eyre retelling I can do. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. So I will update you guys uh, when I've gotten a little bit farther into the book or maybe when I finish it. I don't know. I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. finished The Wipe of Stairs by Rachel Hawkins. I really enjoyed this actually. I'm surprised. I was thinking it might be a three star but this was like a four star. This was a lot of fun. I did yeah, predict everything that happened. I don't think it was supposed to be like crazy amazing twist or anything like that. I really liked it though. I really enjoyed it. I loved the rich people drama and the like toxic female friendship situation going on. I just had a really good time with it. It was just kind of the vibe I like in a domestic thriller and it was a good time. It was toxic. It was mysterious. There was rich people drama. I, I just thought it was a really good time. I can kind of look at this and see some other books that it's similar to. I think that if you're looking at a thriller, saying books is similar to is like spoiling the twists and twists are never that original like there's lots of twists like doing the same twist to someone else is not plagiarism okay let's just put that out there and there are books that this is similar to and I'm I get a little bit annoyed with people saying that other people are like stealing each other's works just because their twists are the same because all you're doing is spoiling the book for people and that's not plagiarism boom hot take I'm done. Rand. That does not really have to do with this book. It has to do with another scenario. But anyway, I liked this. 
I would recommend this. If you haven't read this and you like rich people drama, domestic thrillers, domestic mystery thrillers, I think this is a great time. Like, I would recommend this. Four stars, super solid. Number two book down for my flowery books. Not flowery, but flowers on the cover. Okay, um, so I have decided to pick up Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Manisalco. I have never read anything by this author before. I know she's a really famous fantasy romance author and a lot of people really love her. I think that a lot of people were kind of disappointed by this book. I'm walking into this book blind. So I am, I really do like the end papers, like the map of this little town. This is giving me vibes that I was not expecting, okay? This is like Bridgerton fantasy romance edition. When I heard this is about like these, you know, these demons that each represent the seven deadly sins, I was imagining more of a paranormal vibe, darker, but this is kind of light and fluffy with some darker-ish elements, but it's mostly very Bridgerton-esque. Um, just not at all what I was expecting. It's kind of cozy. So I'm liking that. So I guess the relationship in this one is between Envy and our main character. Our main character is an artist and she's kind of like stuck in this relationship where not like a romantic relationship, but she's got this guy who has been blackmailing her into making knockoff art. And so she's kind of stuck in that situation right now. And then there's this game that's starting. I don't fully understand it, even though I'm I'm over 50 pages in and I still don't understand this whole game scenario. Maybe I would understand it more if I read the first trilogy in this world that followed, I guess, Wrath, apparently. Because that series starts out YA, I'm just not super interested in it. Yeah, maybe I would understand it better. I think the world building is catching me up just fine. I think you can go straight into this without reading the first trilogy, but the game, I don't fully understand. There's this weird game. There's this mysterious game master. Basically, you're supposed to just know when you start seeing clues that the game has begun, I guess. And so Envy is playing this game to, like, save his little kingdom or city or whatever she's apparently fallen into ruin but he doesn't want anyone to know so he wants to win this game the game has started and somehow this game involves our artist our main character so um he tries to commission a painting from her and she's like mm, no because she can see that he wants her to draw this object and this object is cursed she knows it's cursed so she clearly has some kind of history of knowledge of like magic and things like that so she's a little bit mysterious um i don't know much about her or her past it seems a bit mysterious looks like her father was an artist her mother had done lots of traveling so yeah i've read the first i've read the the epilogue and the first four chapters on page 57 and i am hesitantly enjoying it do i think this is my next favorite fantasy romance of all time no uh, the writing could be better. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the writing style. I am liking the Bridgerton vibes, though. I'm liking the Bridgerton vibes. I am liking the descriptions of the world. I am really enjoying that. And I want to see where the romance goes. Mostly, I'm liking these, like, quirky, like, gossipy kind of relationships, you know, that... Bridgerton offers the same kind of vibe. I'm liking that. So yeah, uh, we'll see where it goes. I, I don't think it's gonna be my next favorite fantasy romance of all time, but I think I could really enjoy it. And it's, it's giving spring. Like even though it's set in fall, it's giving spring to me. Like wisteria doesn't bloom in the fall, okay? Just saying. Um, okay, so I will update you guys when I'm farther in. Maybe... At the halfway point? I don't know. We'll see. I'm wanting to start reading like more every day, but the problem is the two books I'm reading right now don't have audiobooks. So it's kind of putting like a hamper on my reading a little bit. Maybe coming up soon here, I'll do like one of those like reading 100 pages a day thing. But for me, it'd probably be like reading 150 pages a day because that is generally my, like if I'm not in a reading slump, I generally kind of aim for 150 a day. Uh, so I don't know. I guess we'll see. I don't know. Not that I do read 150 every day. It's just like, that'd be nice if I read 150. You know? I don't know. It's a weird thing with me. 
150. So uh, maybe I'll do a vlog where I start trying to do that again because it's been a while since I read 150 pages a day. It's been a couple months. So I'll think about doing that. I don't know. Random rambling thoughts from Hannah, I guess. Uh, but yeah, today is raining. It's a rainy, rainy, yucky day. Um, and I need to finish organizing my shelves. Will I share that process with you? No, it's a freaking hot mess. I don't, I don't, I don't want people to see it. <laughs> I just don't. Um, me trying to like organize, it's a hot mess. It's not cute. Um, so I will just show you guys the end product because that's what I'm going to do. But yeah, I will update you guys. Um, when I have something to update you with. Okay, so I have now decided to go ahead and DNF Throne of the Fallen. So I actually just returned it to my library. So popping up a picture of Throne of the Fallen right here. I got like 80 something pages in. I read a few more chapters since my last update. And honestly, the writing style is just not for me. Maybe if I could get an audiobook, it would be a whole different story. Because I do, like I said before, like the Bridgerton kind of like British Regency era seeming like feeling. And a little bit of that is in the writing style too. But also I found the writing style to be kind of jarring. Um, I didn't like the sentence structures. I actually specifically felt like the sentence structures were confusing to read and didn't flow well. So I just had an issue with the flow, especially of the writing style. I didn't think it was written well, in my opinion. And because of that, I, I just didn't have to. I also felt like we were told all these things about the characters and this there, there was just this immediate attraction between the two of them and I could see where things were going and it just it just felt too easy and it just felt not believable at all so between the, the jarring writing style and the honestly like what I felt like was poor de development of characters and the poor believability of their relationship I just didn't like it I just really wasn't vibing with it it, it was what probably took me about three days to just get like 80 pages in and that says something. I mean this is a fantasy romance. This should not be 80 pages in three days kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So it just wasn't for me. I DNF'd it. I didn't want to DNF a book, especially the third book in this vlog that kind of sucked because those are the books I was going to read for this vlog. So it just sucks because my first book in this vlog was so flipping good. It was five stars. I had a pretty good second book too, like a really enjoyable four star and then just a major flop. So that's kind of disappointing, but that's okay. That's life. I have now tried this author and I know that I probably won't ever pick up another book by her, honestly, because it's a, it's a writing style issue. So if I don't like her writing style, I don't like her writing style unless she comes out with something completely different and I think it might be written differently. I probably just won't pick up another Carrie Maniscalco book. Um, I just don't think she's the author for me. So that's fine. That's life. Um, but I mean, it still was a successful ish vlog. I really liked doing the themed reading vlog. Uh, I'm really liking vlogging. I know it's not usually been a thing that's like really big on my channel, but I hope it's something that you guys, at least the ones that watch, if you watch my channel like regularly, I hope it's something that you're okay with. Let me know if you like vlogs because I'm liking doing the vlogs. So it might be a thing that it's like a more often kind of thing. I don't know. We'll see. I, I think so. Um, at least for now, I'm in a vlogging mood. So let me know down below if you like the vlogs and let me know too if you've got any like fantasy romance wrecks for me right now. I, you know, I have some fantasy romance still I want to read. Maybe I will do a fantasy romance deep dive kind of vlog video or something like that where I can try out some new fantasy romance. I do want to read Sarah Parker's new book still. So that's a fantasy romance that I do have on my CBR that I want to get to. I also want to try Feybound. Um, I actually have that from the library out right now. Sorry, I was looking at it at my library, my library bookshelf. Um, because I have that many books out from the library right now. Those are definitely two fantasy romances I want to try. And maybe I'll try that new Viking one too, A Fate Inked in Blood. So there's definitely a few more fantasy romances I want to try that are coming out or have come out recently, I mean. But anyway, 
I'm kind of like spiraling in my thoughts. Sorry. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and comment down below. Let me know some fantasy romance recommendations that you have for me because this is a major slap flop. Let me know if you like the vlog style uh, content on my channel. I will probably be keeping up at least for now. Um, and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, until next time, fellow readers, keep reading and living your best life. You felt Cause you try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, yeah.